So how might we use the creative arts in worship to help people discover more about God? I think it's a fascinating question. I think because, depending on which tradition we come from, we have a whole range of experiences about what is normal in worship. So I come from a tradition where what would be normal in worship, I think, is a huge emphasis upon words, upon language. Primarily, that would be the language of Scripture. It would be the Word of God preached and read, uh, the Word of God informing how we shape liturgy and worship. Other traditions would be used to many other things. So part of what I bring to answering this question is the DNA of my own faith, my, my faith experience. But over the years of my ministry, and particularly as I have taught and reflected more and more about worship, I've come to recognise the significance of other modes of expression. I am myself an artist, I delight in the visual, and I think the creative arts and the visual arts in particular can bring all sorts of dimensions to worship that we don't easily get just from relying upon words. I think for me one of the great things about the visual arts is that they are open-ended. We look at pictures, we see movies, and things happen in our own minds and hearts and souls. We can't control what happens when an image starts to work upon someone else. I can create a painting, I have all sorts of ideas about why I have created it in the way that I have. But once it's away from my studio and my easel, once it's in a place of worship, once it's projected using PowerPoint, or once it's put on the wall of a church, it speaks to everyone who encounters it in all sorts of ways. And I have a deep sense that the Holy Spirit is at work in that process. There is a, an encounter and a conversation that is open-ended. And I think often we encounter God best when we don't try to close down and limit what that conversation might mean. So that's one of the things I think about the creative arts and the visual in worship. I think another dimension of it is the fact that we are all so very different. Some of us grow really well when we have a really difficult question to argue over in our minds and we relish being able to have conversation with other people and that's, that's how we learn and discover something of God and that's how we encounter something of the wonder of what God is up to. But some of us, and I think it's quite a large number of us, discover that we encounter God when we can still the world, slow things down, create space, and simply be. And I think contemplating visual art, being in a sanctuary of worship that is itself a beautiful place, a place that people have taken care to light and to heat and to make comfortable and to make welcoming, that in itself can become a place of encounter where the Spirit works upon our souls. So I have a, a profound sense that we limit what worship can be if we try to exclude from it the potential of the visual arts. Now we have to be careful because it doesn't work for everybody and indeed I often work with people who for example cannot see a PowerPoint um, when it's projected in worship. Their eyesight isn't able to let them encounter that. So we have to be careful, we have to be hugely aware of who's with us in worship and what do we do to allow and enable everyone to participate. You know, does that mean, for example, that if we're projecting an image on a screen, we also make sure that that image is available as a hard copy for anyone who needs it up close? Do we make sure that it's described really carefully, verbally, so that someone who even can't see it very well can imagine it? Do we deliberately make sure in worship that sometimes there are things that people can touch and taste, things that engage all of our senses and faculties? I think we need to be careful, but in the being careful, I hope we never limit the wonder of what can happen when God speaks to us in ways that go beyond what our words can do.
painting that I created, it's actually, um, it's a meditation on a place that I used to live. I used to live in the Cook Islands. My, my mother and father were missionaries with the London Missionary Society. So I grew up in the Cook Islands. This is a meditation about what it is to live on a tiny speck of land in a vast ocean. So it is primarily playing with the colours of the Pacific Ocean. The yellow squares are in the correct locations for all of the islands of the Cook Island group. And the yellow represents the, the, the glorious um, coral beaches that surround those islands. And in the middle of each yellow square, there's a little bit of power shell. Now, power shell is a, it's a shell that grows under the waters around New Zealand. And you can carve it and, and polish it and you get these glorious colours. So I, I enjoy all of the resonances here because it was from Rarotonga that the Polynesians set out in their canoes to head south. And they headed south from Muri Lagoon on Rarotonga and they reached New Zealand and the, uh, the uh, Maoris of New Zealand trace their ancestry from a little lagoon on Rarotonga, just there. So to actually create the island using a shell that itself grows off the coast of Aotearoa, New Zealand, is for me a wonderful set of resonances. And it's, it's also about just having fun with colour and um, how do you paint lots of squares, all the same size, trying to make each of them subtly different. Um, and it, it, for me, it, it takes me back to somewhere that is home. And for other people, well, they see all sorts of things, and that's equally wonderful.